Today I'm teaching you guys how to make miso soup, but more importantly, I'm also teaching you how to make dashi. It doesn't sound as impressive until I explain what it is. Dashi is the classic cooking stock used in a lot of Japanese cuisine. Once you learn how to make this, you can make tons of other dishes, and I will forever constantly refer you back to this video if you're like, I wanna make dashi. I'll be like, go back to the miso soup video. It's super easy to make, but your house will smell a bit like Neptune's anus. That's right, I said it. Otherwise, if you have any cats, they will be uh, super happy with what's going on. Let's get started. And by get started, I mean, I need to drink some of this apple juice with ice cubes and a straw, not bourbon and ginger ale. It's bourbon and ginger ale. It's delicious. Now before we make miso soup, we have to make dashi, the cooking stock, first. Now yesterday night, I started my dashi. This is not it yet, but this is kombu, which is a special seaweed you use to make it, just soaking in normal filtered water. You don't have to soak it overnight, but if you soak it overnight, the flavors are so much richer and better. You can make it like right away on the stove top and it'll be okay, but this is the best way to do it. The reason why this is the better way to do it is because kombu is covered in all types of like minerals and the natural form of MSG is actually on this in its real life form. You might see looking kind of like a little bit white or gray. You don't want to wash that off. That's actually really important to the flavor. You guys might have heard people talking about Japanese food as being like umami. And that umami flavor often comes from this kind of a natural ingredient. This is the basis for what people copy the taste of MSG. Now, kombu is seaweed, but I don't want you to mistake it for other kinds of seaweed. Like you guys might have this hanging around your house. You might've seen this before for like wrapping up sushi rolls and stuff. This is roasted seaweed and you absolutely cannot use this as a replacement. It doesn't have anything on on it and it will just turn into like mush and be totally disgusting. It's also not this seaweed, which is wakame. And wakame is actually those seaweed pieces you have when you're actually drinking miso soup. This is rehydrated and it will look a lot nicer. I personally do not like that texture or taste of seaweed. Didn't like it in Korea. Do not like it in my miso soup. But for the sake of making authentic miso soup, I bought this for you guys. Personally, I think it tastes like mermaid toilet paper. But you know what, everyone has their own thing. So for four cups, about a liter of filtered tap water, I put in around two to four pieces of kombu. I can't tell you the exact amount because when you buy your kombu, you might buy them in big sheets. You might buy them in tiny squares. So it really depends on what you're buying. But it's kind of like four cups is gonna be like an iPhone sevens worth of kombu. Originally I was like, I'll describe it like a phone. But what if you have a galaxy? What if you have a thinner phone? So think of it like this is how much you kind of want to put in if you have four cups. Also, this recipe is really cool because as you taste your soup when you make it, you can say, I didn't like that. It had too much seaweed flavor and you can redo it again as you go. So it's a really kind of a personal preference, but I'll get you started with the basic recipe. Next up, I wanna to talk to you guys about bonito flakes, also known as katsuoboshi. So in English, we call them bonito flakes, which apparently is not even right because it's not even the right fish, but basically it's like a dried skipjack tuna or something that's been like preserved and filled with mold, like a cheese and then taken out again and then filled with mold and then they like break it down after hundreds of days and then they shave it and then eventually we get this. I don't even know. It basically just smells like smoked fish. It has a really smoky flavor to it and that's natural after their days of aging. <laughs> This smoky flavor is extremely important to your soup. You can add more or you can add less depending on if you don't like the flavor. You've definitely seen this before. It's usually like sprinkled on things like um, takoyaki, the octopus squid balls, or like okonomiyaki. And it looks like it's kind of like dancing and alive and it's not at all. It's just that it's so thinly sliced that the heat makes it kind of look like it's dancing. We're gonna be using this as well. These are really the only two things we need to make the base. Outside of the water, the kombu, and the katsuoboshi, we're gonna be thinking about miso next. There are three different kinds of miso. There's red miso, brown miso, and white miso. When we went to Kyoto, I found that the miso soup was really, really sweet. And I know that food changes regionally in Japan, but it's because white miso is actually a lot younger and sweeter than brown miso or red miso. Personally, because we've been to Tokyo more often, I prefer a brown miso based miso soup. It's basically just kind of saltier in my opinion, but I find that it was a bit too salty. So I am mixing two different kinds together. You can buy whatever kind you want, taste it. And if you find it's too salty or too sweet, get another one and see what that's like as well. So I'll be doing a brown miso mix with a white miso. Then you need to chop up some green onion and you need some soft tofu cut up into cubes. And of course, your seaweed rehydrated, which is totally gonna add so much flavor and texture to the soup. Oh no, I accidentally tripped and it fell into the toilet. Okay, let's get cooking. So I'm making this recipe for two 
to three people depending on the size of your bowls. I've basically been measuring everything based on my tiny little miso bowl that I got from Daiso for one dollar. So this recipe really is like two to three of those bowls. I'm gonna add two cups of my kombu water base and I'm gonna add in about two to three pieces of the actual kombu. We're gonna bring it to a boil and before it actually boils you gotta take the kombu out of the pan. If you let it boil it becomes like a slimy disgusting really? so copywritten as well. Hey banana, yeah. I'm really sorry to tell you this but I'm just right in the middle of filming. I just wanted to pick up and say hi. Can you see There's Boo? No, we'll find another time. If you just okay. want to very quickly show me Ellington, I'd be very happy. Hi little Ellington. Hi. Hi Ellington. <laughs> I do that to memers all the time. That's my favorite thing to do. I'm like, I'm not responsible for this. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye guys. Love you lots. Bye. My sister had a baby and I'm a new aunt. And now we have to figure out what aunt means in Japanese because I'm Momo to my niece because I was in Korea, but now I'm in Japan. What's aunt? We don't know. The key with this moment is to bring it to a boil, but just before it actually starts boiling, we have to take the kombu out. If you leave it in, it becomes really like slimy and it becomes bitter tasting and it will completely ruin your soup. If you taste your soup and it's bitter, that's because you left it in for too long. So I've removed my kombu, the water is boiling. I'm gonna be adding my katsuobushi. The key is to kill the heat and we let it actually sink down to the bottom. And we're gonna do that for five minutes. Now the smell is going to be like, Martina, what am I making? It will not taste this strong. When I smelt it the first time I made this, I was like, this is gonna be a revolting. But when you taste it, it's totally mild but right now it smells like my cat is breathing into my mouth that's what it smells like like neighbors is like mom I love you <sighs> and I'm like Mwah. I love my beautiful wife. run neighbors I need to strain my katsu oboshi we've trained our cat so that if you make kissy sounds he licks you watch Did you train your cat to do that? While the katsuobushi is actually soaking, you guys need to get something prepared in advance. You're gonna need a bowl and you're gonna need a strainer. I'm just using a piece of kitchen paper, like paper towel. It's gonna capture all those little tiny bits and pieces that have broken down. Afterwards, we're gonna squeeze it out to make sure we get every single drop of that dashi. And some people take that katsuobushi as well as the kombu and they dry it in the sun and then they chop it into pieces and they use it for powder to flavor their onigiri. I, however, place mine directly in the garbage and seal it up and put it outside so that memers doesn't try to eat the garbage can. Now that we've strained the katsuobushi out and we just have the clear dashi left, I'm gonna bring that back to a boil. I'm gonna add in my cubed soft tofu. I'm gonna dump it in and let it warm up for like 30 to 45 seconds. I'm using about two to three fingers worth of tofu. That doesn't sound good, does it? I just mean like the amount of size. It's up to you again. If you don't like tofu, cut it out. The amount of size? Yes, the amount of size. What? <clears throat> you mean the size. The amount of the size. You don't need the amount of size. You just Side. You're crazy. Now pass me my drink. Martina's Midnight Munchies. You know, it's nighttime and I'm cooking miso soup, which is crazy. It's for the morning. Is there a hole in the straw? There is. Every one of these garbage straws has a hole in it. If you try to extend it, what's the point of a bendy straw if you can't extend it? I can't even make funny shapes. It's like, oh, it's the off the angle shape. Nope. Doesn't suck anything up. You just got to shove it back down into a perfect straight, which is just a normal straw. Bullshit. Somebody's been hitting the sauce. You don't tell me what to do. So while you're waiting, you can add your chopped green onions to your bowl. And if you're using the chopped seaweed, you can add it as well with green onions, but I'm honestly not gonna use this because I wanna eat my soup. When you add your miso to your soup, you cannot just simply add in the miso. It will be really chunky and clumpy. So some people will use like a little tiny miniature sieve. Sieve? 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 Sivey. Sivey? They'll add a miniature sivey and they'll use that to break it down. I just use a ladle. And so I basically kind of lay it into the soup. I add my miso a tablespoon at a time and I just kind of rub it around until it breaks down. Okay, you're gonna kill the heat. And we're gonna start with one tablespoon of the light miso. The reason you don't add the miso to boiling soup is because it kills all the really good enzymes that are in here because this is like fermented. It's actually quite healthy. It's kind of like when we used to eat kimchi in Korea. And mix it around like that. I'm gonna add another tablespoon of the dark miso. Okay, 
And now I'm adding half a tablespoon. Ah! Ah! It's fine. And half a tablespoon of dark miso. Remember, this is just my personal mix. So you guys can just use three tablespoons of whatever miso you want. If it's too salty, then add a different type of miso and a little bit less. So just keep trying it until you see what you want. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna try some. Perfect! I can taste a smoky aftertone from the katsuwabushi. It's got a nice natural salty flavor and that umami flavor that I'm looking for as well. Okay, I'm gonna serve it up right onto my freshly cut green onions. Ah. Mm. This was not complicated to make, right guys? If you guys want to make this recipe, make sure you click on the link and it'll take you over to my blog post, which I will show you my recipe for this one. Remember, it is very tweakable. If you're vegetarian or vegan, you can leave out the katsuobushi, the tuna slices, and just have the actual seaweed broth. You can also add some kind of dried mushrooms to make it taste a little bit richer. Guys, you have to try this from scratch. You're gonna feel so satisfied to make this. And remember, I'm gonna constantly refer to this recipe as the base for dashi when I show you how to make other things. <sighs> Somebody get me a bowl of rice. What's that, Memers? You want me to make out with you some more? Coming through my fat prints. That's not part of the video. Nobody wants that. They might. Can't have it. Mmm.